Dear Heavenly Father, once again I want to thank you for this day. Baba mpenzi wa mbinguni mara nyingine tena nakushukuru kwa siku hii. And I want to glorify you because Lord you deserve all the glory and the honor. Nataka kukutukuza kwa sababu Bwana unastahili utukufu wote na heshima. And thank you that Lord you gathered your children from the four corners here again this morning. Asante Bwana kwa kukusanya watoto wako kutoka kona nne mbalimbali asubuhi mahali hapa. Lord, na Bwana, what is the attraction? Kivutio ni nini? The attraction is not a particular man. Kivutio sio mtu fulani. The attraction Kivutio is you the bread of life. Ni wewe mkate wa uzima. You that granite white stone. Wewe lile jiwe jeupe sana. That is not even written. Ambalo hata halijaandikwa chochote. And that Malachi 4 told the people to look on this. Ambalo Malaki 4 aliwaambia watu walitazame. And we are here Lord. Na tuko hapa Bwana looking on this. Tukitazama hili. Looking on this white rock. Tukitazama huu mwamba mweupe. The mysteries. Siri of you yourself. Za wewe mwenyewe. For when they are projected into us. Kwa sababu zinapoonekana kwetu. Lord. Bwana. Then it will be Christ in us the hope of glory. Ndipo utakuwa Kristo ndani yetu tumaini la utukufu. Now God you know how weak this body is. Naye Bwana unajua jinsi gani udhaifu mwili huu ulivyo. But again you know the desire and the hunger of your children. Lakini unajua pia shauku na njaa watoto wako. I pray that God you'll come and take over. Ninaomba kwamba Bwana utakuja na kuchukua. And bless your word. Na ubariki neno lako. In our hearts. Mioni mwetu. Anoint your servant. Paka mafuta mtumishi wako. And anoint the translator. Na umpake mafuta mfasiri. Have your way with us this morning. Uwe na njia yako pamoja nasi asubuhi ya leo. In Jesus name we pray. Kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba. Amen. Amina. Hallelujah. So if Glory. we can turn to our Bibles. Tufungue Biblia zetu. We are reading in the book of Joshua. Tunasoma katika kitabu cha Joshua. Yeah, we are in the book of Joshua chapter 13. Tupo katika kitabu cha Joshua sura ya 13. We shall pick some few verses here. Tutachukua mistari michache hapa. Verse 1. Mstari wa kwanza. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years and the Lord is saying unto him thou art old and stricken in years and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Basi Yeshua alipokuwa mzee na kuendelea sana miaka yake, Bwana akamwambia, wewe umekuwa mzee na kuendelea sana miaka yako. Kisha inasalia nchi nyingi sana bado kumilikiwa. This is the land that yet remaineth. All the borders of the Philistines and all Gerush, Geshur, I mean. Hii ndio nchi inayosalia kumilikiwa. Nchi zote za Wafilisti na wageshuru wote from Sihor which is before Egypt even under the borders of Ekron northwards which is counted to the Canaanite the five lords of the Philistines the Gazazites the Ashdodites the Eshcolonites the Gitites the Ekronites and also the Avites kutoka Shihori hicho kijito kilicho kabili Misri hata mpaka wa Ekroni upande wa kaskazini nchi inayohesabiwa kuwa ni yao hao wa Kanani Mashehe matano na hao wa Filisti wa Gaza na wa Ashidodi na wa Ashkeloni na wa Giti na wa Ekroni tena wa Avi You can go down to verse 7 Unaweza kushuka chini mpaka mstari wa saba kwa muda wako Let me just take take also chapter 17 Hebu nisome pia sura ya 17 Joshua chapter 17 Joshua sura ya 17 from verse 14 kuanzia mstari wa 14 And the children of Joseph spoke unto Joshua saying why have you given but one lot why have you given why have why has thou given me but one lot and one portion to inherit seeing i am a great people for as much as the lord has blessed me hitherto kisha wana wa yusufu wakaene wakanena na yeshua wakasema kwani umenipa mimi kura moja tu na fungu moja kuwa urithi wangu kwa kuwa mimi ni taifa kubwa la watu 
kwa sababu Bwana amenibarikia hata hivi sasa <laughs> and Joshua answered them if thou be a great people then carry thee up to the wood country and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants if mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee Yeshua akawaambia mm-hmm. kwamba wewe utaifa kubwa la watu mm. haya kwea uende mwituni ujikatie mahali hapo kwa ajili ya nafsi yako katika nchi ya waperizi na hao warefai ikiwa hiyo nchi ya vilima ya Ephraim ni nyembamba na haikutoshi and the children of Joseph said the hill is not enough for us and all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron both they who are of Beth Horon and her towns and they who are of the valley of Jezreel and Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph even to Ephraim and to Manasseh saying thou art a great people and have great power thou shall not have one uh, shall not have one lot only but the mountain shall be thine for it is a, it is a wood and thou shall cut it down and the outings of it shall be thine and thou shall drive out the Canaanite although they have iron chariots and though they be strong wana wa yusufu wakasema hiyo nchi ni ya vilima haitutoshi sisi lakini wakanani wote wakao katika nchi ya bondeni wana magari ya chuma hao walio katika Bethshenai na miji yake na hao walio katika bonde la Yezreeli pia kisha Yoshua alinena na nyumba ya Yusufu maana ni Ephraim na Manase akawaambia wewe utaifa kubwa la watu nawe una uwezo mwingi hautapata kura moja tu lakini hiyo nchi ya vilima itakuwa ni yako maana ijapokuwa ni mwitu wewe utaukata na matokeo yake yatakuwa ni yako kwa kuwa wewe utawafukuza hao wa Kanani wajapokuwa wana magari ya chuma wajapokuwa ni wenye uwezo Glory be to God Utukufu kwa Mungu Isn't it interesting Before you see it I know you are going to see it until you get tired Kabla hujaona na najua utaona wakati Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 Kabla ya Waebrania sura ya 6 mstari wa 1 Therefore living the principles of the doctrine of Christ Let us go on and perfection not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Kwa sababu hiyo tukiacha kuyanena mafundisho ya kwanza ya Kristo tukaze mwendo ili tufikire utimilifu tusiweke msingi tena wa kuzitubia kazi zisizo na uhai na wakuwa na imani kwa Mungu of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying of of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment this we will do if god permits na wa mafundisho ya mabatizo na wakuwekewa mikono na kufufuliwa wafu na hukumu ya milele na hayo tutafanya mungu akitujalia may god bless his word and bless you may be seated bwana wabariki neno lake na wabariki ninyi mnaweza keti it's interesting inashangaza that you know one of the stubborn tribes in Israel were Ephraim and Manasseh kwamba moja hapo ya makabila masumbufu Israeli ilikuwa ni Ephraim na Manasseh you remember Ephraim would always attack any man that God sent to fight unaona Ephraim angeshambulia mtu yote ambao Mungu alisema ni wa ni wa kupigana naye no Any man that God would send to fight the enemy when he comes back the Ephraimites would always say why didn't you tell us about it why? how could you go to fight when you didn't tell us about it mtu yote ambaye Mungu atamtuma kapigane na adui Ephraim angekuja kupigana dhidi yake na kumwambia kwa nini ukutujulisha sisi kwanza and many times they fought na mara nyingi walipigana they even fought with Gideon hata walipigana na Gideon yes They fought with Jephtha. Walipigana na Yefta. They waited for any man to go and fight. Walisubiri mtu yote aende akapigane na adui. Then they would come back and say, "Why didn't you tell us?" Halafu wanarudi wanasema, "Why didn't you call us?" Kwa nini ukutoka? How could you go to fight? Kwa nini ulienda kupigana wewe peke yako? Without consulting us. Inapaswa utuulize sisi kwanza. So they, 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 they made themselves of some kind of you know, you know, you know kingpins of warfare. Walijifanya wao kama mabwana wa vita. 
And you know, this this kiburi yao it started right in the days of who? Joshua. Na unaona kiburi chao hiki kianza siku za Yoshua. And they are going to Joshua and they are saying, Na wanaenda kwa Yoshua anamwambia, The land you have given us is not enough. Nchi ile tupatia ni ndogo sana haitutoshi. Give us more land. Tupatie nchi zaidi. We are a great people. Sisi ni watu wakubwa. Look at our status. Tuangalie sisi. We are men in numbers. Sisi ni wengi sana. We are stout on, you know. Sisi ni wa, ni wakubwa. And Joshua said, "Excuse me." Joshua Na Yeshua akasema, "Tafadhali, if you are great as you are saying, kama nyenye ni wakubwa kama vile mnavyosema, there the enemy is in the land." Adui huyo hapo kwenye nchi. There is still land to be conquered. Bado nchi ipo ya kuweza kushinda kushindaniwa. Don't tell me about your greatness. Msiniambie mimi kuhusu ukubwa wenu. Show your greatness by fighting the enemy. Onesheni ukubwa wenu kwa kupigana na adui. Don't tell me how powerful you are. Usiniambie jinsi gani una nguvu. How man of God you are this man of that Jinsi gani wewe ni mtu wa Mungu You have been in the message for 50 years Umekuwa kwenye ujumbe miaka 50 I did this I did that Nilifanya hivi nikafanya hivi sawa vizuri sana Ours is a powerful church Kanisa letu ni kanisa lenye nguvu asante Mine is a powerful ministry Thank you Huduma yangu ni kubwa sana asante We really need you brother Tunakuhitaji sana ndugu Thank you for being powerful Asante kwa kuwa na nguvu sana Thank you for being great Asante kwa kuwa mkubwa But there is the enemy there Lakini kuna adui pale Show us your greatness Tuonyeshe ukubwa wako Don't tell us Usituambie sisi your greatness. Ukubwa wako. Don't tell us your faith. Usituambie imani yako. Don't tell us your revelation. Usituambie ufunuo Don't wako. Don't tell us your doctrine. Usituambie fundisho wako. Don't tell me the message according to me. Usituambie tu sana msamaha ujumbe kulingana na mimi najua ile ile. Adui yule pale. Let us see who you are. Hebu tuone wewe ni nani. On the front line. Kwenye mstari wa mbele. Yeye Amina. Go on the front line. Nenda mstari wa mbele. Show your greatness there. Onyesha ukubwa wako pale. Show your faith there. Onyesha imani yako pale. There is a land. Kuna nchi which belongs to us. Ambayo ni ya kwetu. There are promises. Ni ahadi. That are supposed to be ours. Ambayo zinaposa kuwa za kwetu. There is the perfection. Kuna ukamilifu. That is supposed to be ours. Ambayo naposa kuwa wa kwetu. And you are here busy telling one another about your greatness. Na huko hapa unambiana moja kwa mingine kuhusu ukubwa wako. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Haleluya. Amina. Oh we have faith. I have faith. Oh ni imani, tuna imani. Asante. I'm not going to argue with you brother. Sitobishana na wewe ndugu. We have enough demons for you to tackle. Tuna mapepo ya kutosha kwa wewe kuyakabili. Enough devils. Yapo mapepo ya kutosha. Amina. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amina. Oh, I wish I was a good preacher. We start preaching now. Ninatamani ningekuwa mhubiri mzuri ningeanza kuhubiri sasa. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina Bwana libarikiwe. Now Joshua is getting old. Sasa Joshua amekuwa mzee. As we saw in Gen in Joshua chapter 13. Lakini tumeona Joshua sura ya 13. He was getting old and stricken in years. Alikuwa mzee wa miaka mingi. And then God is reminding him. Na Mungu anamkumbusha. And he's saying you are now old. Anamwambia wewe ni mzee sasa. Stricken in years. Na miaka mingi. And yet there remaineth very much land to be possessed. Hata, hata hivyo nchi kubwa sana imebaki inatakiwa imilikiwe. Joshua. Mungu anamkumbusha Joshua. And Joshua, Na Joshua was God's adoption angel alikuwa ni malaika wa kufanywa wana wa Mungu that person commissioned yule mtu aliyeagizwa to help the children of Israel get their position kuwasaidia wana wa Israeli wapate mahali pao mm. like we were preaching from friday 
The devil wants to kuchanganyika to change the purpose. Shetani anataka kubadilisha kusudi au lengo. From a vineyard to a harvest. Kutoka kuwa shamba la mzabibu kuwa shamba la mitishamba. He wants you to do the other thing. Anataka wewe ufanye vitu vingine. Not the main thing that you were told to do. Sio jambo kubwa au jambo lenyewe hasa unaopaswa kufanya. And you waste your strength on something else. Na unaharibu nguvu zako kufanya kitu kingine. Like we have wasted many precious years. Kama tumepoteza miaka mingi ya thamani. Arguing over doctrines. Tukifungiwa au tukishindana kwenye mafundisho. And every man wants to come up with his stamp of revelation on the message. Kila mtu anataka kuja na muhuri wake wa ufuruo wake kwenye mjumbe. Kila mtu anataka kitu fulani. You know? Unajua? Attached to his name. Anataka kila kitu kiwe kimeshikamanishwa na jina lake. Attached to his name. I started this revival. Mimi ndo nianzia shauku. I started this. this. Mimi ndo nianzisha hiki. I am the one who started preaching this. Mimi ndo nianza kubiri hiki. Mimi ndio hiki. You are not the one who started God thinking about sending Malachi 4. Wewe sio ulieanza wakati Mungu Sorry. You are not the one who made God to start thinking about sending Malachi. So this message is not your business. It is God's business. The most important thing in his message is not the doctrine according to pastor this. Pastor that. And that one has divided us na hayo yametugawaja na moja kwa mwingine na kiburi yake kila mmoja wao kila mmoja i am i i i kila mmoja ni mimi mimi najua hiki mimi when hiki. the devil is here here lakini shetani yuko hapa hapa the enemy is coming very Shet, close kuja karibu zaidi we are wasting time on doctrines tunapoteza muda kwenye mafundisho I doing over this. I doing over that. Tunabishana hili, tunabishana hili. I am better than you. Mimi ni bora kuliko wewe. You are better than that one. Wewe ni bora kuliko yule. That one is better than that one. Yule ni bora kuliko yule. You are better than nothing. Wewe ni bora kuliko yule. You are all nothing. Nyote ni bure. I am nothing. Mimi ni bure. It is Jesus who is everything. Ni Yesu Kristo ambaye ndiye kitu fulani. And the devil na shetani has made us waste time on that. Amefanya tupoteze muda wetu kwenye mambo hayo. Doctrines. Mafundisho. People coming up with weird ideas. Watu wanakuja na mawazo ya ajabu. You see now how the children of Joseph were busy talking about how great they are. Unaona wana wa Yusufu walikuwa wanazungumza kuhusu jinsi gani walipo wakubwa. And every other tribe should look to us. Na kabila lingine lote linapaswa tuangalie sisi. They forgot. Walisahau. That when it comes to war kwamba inapokuja kwenye vita God commissioned Judah to always lead. Mungu aliagiza Juda ndi waongoze vita. But now they are saying we are the captains. Lakini wanasema sisi ni wakubwa. Sisi ni washindi. Remember? Kumbukeni? We were the children of Joseph the beloved. Sisi ni watoto wa wa Yusufu. The beloved son of Jacob. Ambe ni mwana mpendwa wa Yakobo. They had quotes. Walikuwa na nukuu. They can prove that they were Wanaweza kuthibitisha. They can they come from a perfection line. Wanatoka kwenye mstari wa ukamilifu. Look at us. Tutazame sisi. We fled all of Israel. Sisi ndio tuliwalisha Israeli wote. When you came to Egypt, mlipokuja Misri, was our father. Ilikuwa ni baba yetu. Who fed you? Aliyewalisha. We have the revelation. Tulikuwa na ufunuo. Of how to keep the food. Wa jinsi ya kutunza chakula. We, we store the food. Tulihifadhi chakula. Mhm. Yeah. Yes sir. Yes. Haleluya. Everybody look to us. Kila mtu tazama sisi. Tuangalie sisi. Mmesahamu namna mlimkuja na mlipiga magoti huko Misri. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Nyinyi yote mlikuja. You came and knelt down. Mlikuja mkapiga magoti. Before our father Joseph. Mbele ya baba yetu Yusufu. And they were true. Na walikuwa sahihi. But now what? Lakini sasa nini? That is history. Hiyo ni historia. That is what God did through Joseph. Hicho ni Mungu alichofanya kupitia Yusuf. Yeah. So Joseph was your father. Thank you. That is very good. Yusuf alikuwa baba yenu. Sawa, hilo ni nzuri asante. But now Joseph is not here. Lakini Yusuf hayuko hapa. And Joseph is not the one who brought us from Egypt. Na Yusuf si aliyetutoa Misri. God sent a prophet. 
Mungu alituma nabii. Utukufu kwa Mungu. God sent a prophet. Mungu alituma nabii. And that prophet na huyo nabii didn't come from the tribe from Joseph. Haku, hakuja kupitia kabila la. No. Hapana. He came from the tribe of Levi. Alikuja kupitia kabila la Lawi. And he came with that says the Lord. Na alikuja na hivyo asema Bwana. So sahau maneno ya Joseph sasa. Amen. So these words of Joseph now. Your arguments are not applicable now. Mabishano yenu hayana nafasi hapa sasa hivi. I am the one Mimi ndiye who brought the message in Tanzania. Nieleta ujumbe Tanzania. Thank you. God bless you. Mungu akubariki. But that's not what is the problem Lakini now. Lakini hiyo sio tatizo tulionalo. Hallelujah. Thank you. Asante. I started five churches. Nilianzisha makanisa mazuri. I started five mazuri. churches. Nilianzisha makanisa mazuri. Thank you. God bless Asante. you. Asante. Mungu akubariki. But we still have the enemy here. Lakini bado adui yuko hapa. That history is not going to help us. Hiyo historia hai, haina uhusiano na hapa. Let us go hai. to perfection. Tuende ukamilifu. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Let us become what God called us for. Hebu tufanyike kile Mungu alichotusia. That reality. Hebu tuwe na ule uhalisia. Let us live the historical background. Hebu tuache aya za historia. I came from this. I came from here. I, I am under pastor so and so. I am under this ministry. So and so. I am under this ministry. No. We are all the children of Jesus. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. And we must put on the head of Jesus. Na lazima tuvae kichwa cha Yesu. We must put on the head of Jesus. Lazima tuvae kichwa cha Yesu. And everybody. Na kila mtu. Everyone. Kila mmoja. Must strike perfection. Lazima afikie ukamilifu. Man, woman, girl, boy. Mwanamke, mwanaume, binti, mwana, msichana. Must be transformed. Lazima abadilishwe. Must possess the land. Lazima miliki nchi. You are not going to possess it by your muscles. Hauto miliki kwa misuli yako. By your history, kwa historia yako, by your intelligence, kwa akili yako, by the knowledge you have, kwa maarifa uliyonayo, no, hapana. But you are going to possess it by faith. Lakini utamiliki kwa imani. And there are the enemies. Na adui huyo hapo. Here he is. Huyu hapa. Climb the mountain. Yuko pale mlimani. Go to the valley. Pale bondeni. There are the enemies. Adui huyo hapo. Go and possess the land. Nenda kamiliki nchi. Show your greatness by that. Onyesha ukubwa wako kwenye hilo. Yeah. Amina. Don't tell me. Usiniambie. I have I am a child of Christ. Mimi ni mtoto wa Kristo. I'm the bride of Christ. Mimi ni bibi harusi wa Kristo. God loves me. Mungu ananipenda. He, he knows my heart. Ananijua, anajua moyo wangu. Don't judge me. Usinihukumu. God, I'm not going to judge you. Sito kuhukumu. But now the thing is. Lakini jambo ni hili. Why have you not become what the word said? Kwa nini hujafanyika kile neno lichosema? Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. So my title is Kwa hiyo kichwa cha somo langu ni The challenge to possess the land that remaineth. Changamoto ya kumiliki nchi iliyosalia. That is the challenge. Hiyo ni changamoto. Not who is powerful. Sio nani mwenye nguvu. Who has more members? Nani ana washirika wengi? We are we have a big charge, you know. You they were saying we tu, are multiplied. We are many. Unajua hao walikuwa wanasema tumeongezeka sisi ni wengi. Our church is very big. Kanisa letu ni kubwa sana. We may talk of even me I'm talking of expanding a church, building more church. Hata mimi naongea kuhusu kuongeza kanisa kujenga kanisa zaidi. Because the people are many. Kwa sababu watu ni wengi. But that's not what excites me. Lakini hicho sio kinachonifurahisha. I'm not just happy because people are many. Sifurahi kwa sababu watu ni wengi. I'm not even happy because the sisters uh, 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 they have long hair. That's very wonderful. Sifurahi kwa sababu wanaweza kuonekana beautiful. God nizuri. bless you for having long Mungu hair. Mungu awabariki sana kwa kuwa na nywele ndefu. But lakini that doesn't excite me. Hilo halinifurahishi. That hair is for your husband, not for me. Hilo nywele ni kwa ajili ya mume wako sio kwa ajili yangu. So I'm not just happy because you have long good beautiful hair. Kwa siko furahi kwa sababu una nywele nzuri ndefu. That is between you and your husband and God. Hiyo ni kati yako na mume wako. 
Don't even begin to think if I treat my hair like this, the pastor will feel bad. Usianze hata kuwazia nikifanya nywele zangu hivi mchungaji atajisikia bad. What do you think my, your hair has to do with me? Unawazia nini kama nywele zako zinahusiana nini? Are you my wife? Je, wewe ni mke wangu? Hapana. So don't use it as a beginning ground. Kwa usitumie kama kitu cha cha ku cha kuzungumzia I, I will dress like this nitavaa hivi to annoy the deacons ili niwatie mafuta wa, wa, wa mashemasi you are wasting ah, your, your mashemasi you are wasting your time unapoteza muda wako the deacons never wrote the bible mashemasi hawajawahi kuandika biblia the land is there Inchi iko hapo. The promises are there. Ahadi ziko hapo. The scriptures are there. Maandiko yako hapo. And you say, na unasema that you are a believer. Kwamba wewe ni mwaminio. Why should I even force you to love your wife? Kwa nini nikulazimishe umpende mke wako? Am I the one who told you told you to marry her? Je, mimi ndio nilikwambia ukamuoe? Hallelujah. Why should you think I should make you a home hampe? Kwa nini unafikiria napaswa mimi nikufanye hivyo? Uwe hivyo. So that, there, kwa so, kwa so that there is peace between you and your wife. Ili kuwe na amani kati yako na mke wako. That's why Paul said. Ndio maana Paulo alisema, Husbands, waume, love your own wives. Wapendeni wake zenu wenyewe. So whom do you think is going to love your wife for you? Unafikiri nani atakupendia mke kwa niaba yako? Should I love your wife for you? Je, ni mpende mke kwa ajili yako? Ni mpende mke wako kwa ajili yako? That's your wife. Huyo ni mke wako. Should I tell her she is beautiful? Je, ni mwambie yeye ni mrembo? You know there are some men who are so mean they can even they can't even appreciate their wives. Unajua kuna wanaume wengine wako hey, hey. wako namna fulani hata hawezi hata kuwafurahia wake zao. She tries she makes herself beautiful. Ana jaribu na jifanya kwa and, and, and she comes from the saloon and the man. Anaenda saloon and is like the other one with a disease of sit and stare. Sorry. Anafanana ule yenye iko na magonjwa ya kukaa na kuangalia. Sit and stare. Magonjwa ambayo mtu anaweza kukaa halafu atazame. You, you remember what that, that even when the prophet says even when you ring the bell the baby is like this hata ukipiga kengele anaangalia hivi ametoa kichwa hivi yeah you are the one supposed to tell your wife she's beautiful wewe ndio unapaswa mwambie mke wako ni mrembo tell her mwambie tell her a thousand times truth 2000 times no problem. Mwambie mara 1000 mara 2000 hakuna tatizo. Tell her every morning you are my beautiful flower. I love you. Mwambie kila asubuhi wewe ni uwa langu nzuri nakupenda. Let not the other man be the first one to tell her that she is beautiful. Usiruhusu mtu mwingine awe wa kwanza kumwambia kwamba wewe ni mrembo. So some of you think when you mistreat your wife you are giving me hard time. You are giving yourself your hard time. Wengine mnafikiri kwamba ukimfanyia mke wako vibaya unanipa mimi wakati mgumu. Unajipa wewe mwenyewe wakati mgumu. You are the one who is sleeping in a home as quiet as neighboring graves. Wewe ndio unalala nyumbani kwako ukiwa kimya sana kama makaburi ambayo yako jirani. They don't greet one another. They don't salimia ni mwingine kwa mwingine. Hayatabasamu haya, haya ingawa ni majirani hayo makaburi. Ndio mnalala hivyo. And then you want to make sure she knows you are not sleeping. Na unataka uhakikishi ajue hujalala. But because you don't want to be the one to start saying I'm sorry. Lakini kwa sababu wewe hutaki kuwa kwanza kusema sambahani. And I say unafanya just to show that she's I am awake. Ili aweze kujua yeye kwamba wewe umeamka hujalala. And then the woman also Na mwanamke anajifanya Why are you suffering? Kwa nini unasumbuka? Talk to one another. Ongeeni mmoja kwa mwingine. Tell him I'm sorry. Mwambie samahani. Tell the woman I'm sorry. Mwambie mke wako samahani. 
And then the sisters begin to send the children to the father. Na watoto au wanawake wanaanza kutuma watoto wao kwa baba. Go and tell him. Nenda kamwambie. Who talk whom did you send when you were starting your relationship? Mlipoanza uhusiano wenu mlimtuma nani? And when you were marrying her, na ulipokuwa kimooa, you were calling her sweetheart and ulipo na mwita sweetheart na darling. Now she's mama Jenny. Sasa hivi ni mama Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. What brought the problem? Ni kitu gani kimeleta shida hiyo? Is Baba Enoch. Baba anaitwa Baba Enoch sasa hivi. No more we darling no more sweetie. Sio darling so sweet at tena. Baba Enoch. Ila ni Baba Enoch. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, the relationship that I have with him is because he's the father of my son. Uhusiano pekee nilionao kati yangu mimi na yeye ni kwa sababu yeye ni baba wa mtoto wangu wa kiume. Okay. Sawa. You are just making yourself suffer. Unafanya we mwenyewe usumbuke. And the Bible says. Na Biblia inasema. Wives, wa, wake. Obey your husbands. Watiini wa ume zenu. Submit. Jinyenyekezeni your own husband. Kwa waume zenu wenyewe. Not another man. Sio mtu mwingine au mume mwingine. And you know you men sometimes. Na mnajua nyie wanaume wakati mwingine. You are so good to other women outside there. Mko vizuri kwa wanawake wengine nje huko. Sisters in the church. Hata wadada wa kanisani. The way you greet. Jinsi mnavyowasalimia. Mka kubariki dada. 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 But your wife lakini mke wako you just roar like a lion. Unanguruma kama simba. When you come back home the children are hiding the wife. Ukirudi nyumbani mke na watoto wanajificha. But when you go out lakini ukienda nje you are the dream of every woman. Wewe ni ndoto ya kila mwanamke huko nje. Ha that woman has got a real man. Ah yule mwanamke ana mume halisi. A hypocrite. Ni una, ni mwanaume mnafiki. Yes sir. You can even Refuse to carry your wife on a bicycle claiming you have baggage and carry the other sister there to church. Unaweza ukakataa kumbeba mke wako kwenye baisikeli ukisema anauma mgongo, halafu ukampa lift dada mwingine kumpeka kanisani. Hypocrisy. Huo ni unafiki. What what don't you know? Kitu gani ambacho hujui? Whom do you think is going to tell you to love your wife? Unafikiri nani atakuja kwambie mpende mke wako? Whom are you pretending to? Una unajionyesha kwa nani unaigiza kwa nani Your salvation wokovu wako Is it before God or before men Je ni mbele ya Mungu au mbele ya wanadamu Glory be to God Utukufu kwa Mungu So what we are saying is Kwa kile tunachosema ni kwamba There's enough enemies Kuna maadui wa kutosha And we have so many people defending their statuses Na kuna watu wengi ambao wanachunga hadhi zao You have this revelation about this and that and Je, una ufunuo kuhusu hili na lile na lile na lile? But the simple question is. Lakini swali rahisi ni kwamba. Can you say sorry to your wife when Je, you Je, unaweza kusema samahani kwa mke wako wakati una makosa? Amen. Uh, if you cannot have a revelation that can make you repent your wife when you are wrong. Kama huna ufunuo ambao unaweza kufanya utubu kwa mke wako ukiwa umekosea I don't care how powerful you are on the pulpit. Sijali wewe una nguvu kiasi gani kwenye mimbara. I don't care how many mysteries you preach. Sijali unahubiri siri ngapi. The devil will sit there and laugh at you. Shetani atakaa pale akucheke. And every time you look at the enemy, na wakati kila wakati unapomwangalia adui, you will see chariots of iron. Utaona magari ya chuma That's why when Joshua told them Hiyo ndio sababu Yoshua alipowaambia There is the enemy Huyo hapa adui You want more land Mnahitaji nchi zaidi Who will give you free land Nani atawapa nchi ya bure The land is there Adui yule pale The land is there Nchi ile pale That land belongs to us Ile nchi ni ya kwetu You go and fight Nen and possess Mpigane na mmiliki They have chariots of iron eh, wana, wana magari ya, ya chuma You will see chariots of iron utaona magari ya chuma when you are not the word wakati wewe sio neno but when you become the word lakini unapofanyika neno your enemy 
adui yako is going to become your food atafanyika chakula chako haleluya let me go to the scriptures before now hebu niende kwenye maandiko let's go to numbers twende kwenye kitabu cha hesabu mhm let's go to the book of numbers twende kwenye kitabu cha hesabu and we see tuone the report tuone of ile, the preachers tuone ile habari au ripoti ya wahubiri haleluya Numbers chapter 13 from verse 26. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word um, um, word uh, unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Wakaenda wakafika kwa Musa na Haruni na kwa makutano wote wa wana wa Israeli katika jangwa la Parani huko Kadesh wakawaletea habari wao na mkutano wote wakawaonyesha matunda ya nchi they had the evidence walikuwa na ushahidi these were good preachers hao walikuwa wahubiri wazuri they could identify the, the evidence that the land is good wangeweza kutambua kwamba nchi ni nzuri and we preach na Kuhubiri. about perfection we preach about healing we preach about deliverance and all these things na tunahubiri kuhusu kamilifu tunahubiri kuhusu uponyaji tunahubiri kuhusu kufunguliwa na vitu kama hivyo but to come to that deliverance lakini kuja sasa kwenye huko kufunguliwa kwenyewe is where the problem is hii hapo ndio shida hii to come to that possession kuja kwenye huo umiliki wenyewe to possess that land kumiliki hiyo nchi that we are bringing the evidence to the people ambao tunaleta ushahidi wake kwa watu is the problem hiyo ndio shida hii you can tell the people the message is the truth unaweza kuambia watu ujumbe ni kweli but to come to where that truth becomes you lakini kuja hapo mahali ambapo hiyo kweli inafanyika wewe and then sets you free na inakufanya uwe huru is where the problem is hapo ndipo shida ilipo now sasa and they told him and they said we came to the land which thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it wakamwambia wakasema tulifika nchi uliyotutuma na hakika yake ni nchi yenye wingi wa maziwa na asali na haya ndiyo matunda yake they see the, the good side also waliona upande mzuri wa hiyo but they magnify the negative side lakini wao wakafanya ile mbaya yake au hasi yake kuwa kubwa zaidi so they leave it to the people to decide kwa wakaiacha ili watu wao wenyewe waamue because they themselves are scared they cannot go there kwa sababu wenyewe wameogopa hawezi kwenda kule so they bring the, the positive side of the fruits and kwa, evidence kwa kaleta sehemu yake chanya ambayo ni matunda ule ushahidi and they also bring the negative side halafu kaleta sehemu yake hasi now look at the negative side sasa angalia sehemu yake hasi in verse 28 nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land lakini watu wanaokaa katika ile nchi ni hodari and the cities are old and are very great na miji yao ni maboma nayo ni makubwa sana au moreover we saw the children of anak there hata hivyo pamoja na hayo tuliwaona watoto wa anak pale those are the sons of the giants hao ni wana wale majitu makubwa there were five of them walikuwa ni watano and each one had a kingdom na kila mmoja wa hayo matano alikuwa na mfalme wake. And when you come here in Joshua chapter 13. Na ukija kwenye Joshua sura ya 13. They named them. Waliwataja Ekron, Ekron Ashdod, Ashdod, Gaza, Gaza, Eshkelon, Eshkelon and all those five cities. Hiyo miji mitano mikubwa had each one a giant. Kila moja hiyo miji mitano ilikuwa na mjitu kubwa. So now kwa hiyo sasa this is the report hii ni habari we saw tulio watulana the, okay. the promises are go are okay but sawa lakini the giants are there kuna majitu makubwa yako pale and we don't want to tackle them na hatutaki kupambana nayo mhm now sasa in verse 30 msali wa 30 and they, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it Caleb akawatuliza watu mbele ya Musa akasema na tupande mara tukaita malaki maana twaweza kuishinda bila shaka we are more than able 
Sisi tunaweza ni zaidi ya kuweza. No wonder brother Branham identifies Caleb as a true believer. Ndio maana ndugu Branham anamtambua Caleb kama mwaminio wa kweli. What is the language of a true believer? Lugha ya mwaminio wa kweli ni ipi? We are more than able to possess it. Sisi ni zaidi ya wanaoweza kumiliki. And be known to you. Caleb. And be known to Caleb. You know, it was not known to Caleb. Ilikuwa haijulikani kwa Caleb. He thought the we are many. Alijua sisi ndio wengi. Ali aliwazi aliwazi ali. That, that's how he thought. Hivyo ndivyo aliyofikiria. He said we are more than ever. Aliposema sisi tunaweza ni zaidi ya wanaweza. The we are only two. Hakujua kwamba hao sisi ni wawili tu. Haleluya. Amen. There were only Joshua and him. Alikuwa tu ni Joshua na yeye mwenyewe. But he thought the we was including these people. Lakini alifikiri kwamba wale sisi alikuwa anajumuisha na wale wengine. They are many. Ni wengi but empty like a balloon. Lakini walikuwa hawana kitu kama tu puto. Mhm. Let's go down here. Chini hapa. So the congregation started their murmurings, quarrels, Kweo kusanyiko, kusanyiko, doctrinal divisions. Kusanyiko likaanza manunguniko, mabishano, masengenyo na matengano ya kimafundisho. And listen when Caleb speaks the second time. Sikiliza Caleb anaponena mara ya pili. Verse 6 of chapter 14. Msari wa 6 wa sura ya 14. These people had resolved to go back to Egypt. Watu hao walikuwa wamekubaliana warudi Misri. But listen at the two. Lakini sikiliza hao wawili. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephne which were of them that searched the land rent their clothes. Na Yoshi wa mwana wa Nuni na Caleb mwana wa Yefune waliokuwa miongoni mwa mwao waliopeleza nchi wakararua mavazi yao. Why? Kwa nini? That was total dismay, shame. Ilikuwa ni aibu kubwa sana. And I want to tell you friends, nataka niwaambie marafiki. It's a shame. Ni aibu to hear that believers of this message. Kusikia kwamba waaminio wa ujumbe huu. Sometimes they go to even witch doctors. Wakati mwingine wanaenda hata kwa waganga wa kienyeji. To look for deliverance. Kutafuta kufunguliwa. Sachem ni aibu. Where is the God of Elijah? Yuko wapi Mungu wa Elia? Who will ask that question? Nani aliyeuliza hilo swali? Elisha. Elisha. Where is Elisha? Yuko wapi Elisha? You are supposed to be the Elisha. Wewe unapaswa kuwa Elisha. Elisha. Wewe ndiye Elisha. And you have a right to say. Na una aibu kubwa. Where is that God? Yuko wapi huyo Mungu? I want that God. Nataka huyo Mungu. He is not dead. Hajafa. There should be just a problem somewhere. Kuna kuwa tu na shida mahali fulani. But that problem must be solved. Na lakini hilo swali lazima litakulike. I must reach home. I Kwa must get, lazima nipate nyumbani. I must nyubani. be in the rapture. Lazima nipate unyakuo. The devil wants it or not. Shetani apende asipende. I will make it home. Nitafaulu kufika nyumbani. I mubani. should be one of them. Nitakuwa mmoja wao. I should be one of the bride. Nitakuwa mmoja wa bibi harusi. And I have a right. Na ninayo haki. To say. Kusema. Where is the God of this Elijah? Yuko wapi Mungu wa huyu Elia? Where is the God of Malachi? Yuko wapi Mungu wa Malachi? Where is the God of William Branham? Yuko wapi Mungu wa William Branham? Where is that God? Yuko wapi huyo Mungu? Mm. I cannot think of going back to Egypt. Siwezi kuwazia kurudi Misri. Yes sir. And the Bible says they, they chose a captain to lead them back. Na Biblia inasema walichagua kiongozi wa kuwarudisha Misri. But they will never be successful to go back to Egypt. Lakini hata hivyo hawatofanikiwa kurudi Misri. They will ro- rotate and wander in the wilderness until they die. Watazunguka na kuzunguka jangwani mpaka wafe. Yeah. Dying in between unakufa katikati neither a full believer nor a terrible unbeliever sio muaminio kweli au asiamini kabisa upo hapa katika half baked christian mkristo aliyeokwa nusu that's why even those who go back to the denominations they don't fit 
You are not contented back there. Kule. What you know Kile you will never be contented in a denomination. Kule no. Hapana. And you are not going to survive here. Na no. In the kuru wilderness, hapa. no. Hapa jangwani, hapa. At Kadesh Badia, no. Hapa Kadesh Badia, you hapana. must cross River Jordan. Lazima uvuke mto Jordani. And Jordan, na Jordan is death. Ni mauti ya ukifo. You die. Unakufa. We have to reach there. Lazima tufike hapo. So Joshua is saying. Joshua nasema. He tears his clothes. Ana rarua mavazi yake. And they spoke. Now they are two. Joshua and Caleb. Okay. Joshua na Caleb wa wivu. Verse seven. Mstari wa saba. And they spoke to all the company of the children of Israel, no. saying. Walinena na mkutano wote wa Israeli wakasema The land which we pass through to search it inchi tulio pita kati yake kuipeleleza is an exceedingly good land ni inchi njema na ya ajabu sana If the Lord delight in us kama Bwana anatufurahia then he will bring us to this land atatuleta katika ile nchi He will Yeye. bring us yeye atatupeleka sisi kwenye hiyo nchi. And give it to us. Atupatie iwe yetu. A land that floweth which floweth with milk and honey. Nchi inayotiririka maziwa na asali. Now I want you to look at this. Tazama nataka utazame hili. Only rebel you not against the Lord. That is verse 9. Huo ni msali wa 9. Lakini msimwasi Bwana. Hilo tu neither fear ye the people of the land wala msiwaogope wenyeji wa hiyo nchi we are now talking about demons hapa tunazungumzia kuhusu mapepo don't fear the demons of Usiogope the land usiogope mapepo ya nchi haleluya mm? amen why kwa nini for they are bread for us kwa sababu wao ni kama mkate kwetu Sio kama wao ni chakula wao ni mkate, mkate kwetu amen glory to god tukufu kwa mungu so the the enemy is your food kwa hiyo adui ni chakula chako you are fearing your food unaogopa chakula chako mwenyewe and without your food you are going to starve na bila chakula chako utakuwa na njaa. And you will starve, you will die. Na utakufa kwa njaa. So if you want food, kwa kama unataka chakula, the enemies are your food. Maadui ni chakula chako. Those, those demons are your food. Hayo mapepo ndio chakula chako. Oh oh. I say. That's why the Bible says. Ndio sababu Biblia inasema. He prepares a table before you for you before you are enemies. Anaandaa meza mbele kwako kwa ajili yako mbele ya maadui zako. So without your enemies there's no table. Kwa hiyo bila maadui zako hakuna meza inayoandaliwa. So God kwa hiyo Mungu makes sure you are surrounded with enemies. Anahakikisha umezungukwa na maadui. Those people who wish you Amen. death <laughs> wale ambao wanakutakia kifo who are happy when problems come on you ambao wanafurahi matatizo yakija juu yako those people who always abuse you wale ambao mara zote wanakudharau na kushutumu and they will speak a lot of words na watanena maneno mengi they will always curse you mara zote watakulaani and you are always wanting god to take them away na mara zote unataka Mungu awaondoe. But God knows. Lakini Mungu anajua. There is no table for you without those enemies. Hakuna meza kwa ajili yako bila ya hao maadui. Haleluya. Amen. Haleluya. Glory. God will never take away your enemies. Mungu hataondoa maadui wako. So stop praying that God take away my enemies. Kwa acha kuomba kwamba Mungu aondoe maadui zangu. He will keep them alive. Atawadumisha hai. He will give them good life. Atawapa maisha mazuri. So that they keep abusing you. Ili waendelee kukushutumu na kukudharau. Persecuting you. 
wakutese and as they are abusing you and persecuting you that becomes food for you hicho kinafanyika chakula kwa ajili yako it becomes your spiritual strength kinafanyika nguvu zako za kiroho hallelujah yeah amen so you you wonder why you are always surrounded by enemies. Kwa hiyo unashanga kwa nini mara zote umezungukwa na maadui? And don't you ever think you'll migrate from a place A to place B because you are running away from enemies. You will get more. Pia usijaribu kufikiri kwamba utahama utoke sehemu A uende sehemu B kwa sababu unakimbia maadui zako. You'll find more. Utakuta wengi zaidi kule. Because you are a child of God. Kwa sababu wewe ni mtoto wa Mungu. And you only survive where there are enemies. Na unaweza tu kuishi mahali penye maadui. That's why hiyo ndio sababu in the land which belongs to you. Kwenye nchi ambayo ni ya kwako, God never killed those people. Kamwe Mungu hakuwaua wale watu. They were there. Walikuwa pale. But it is your land. Na ni nchi yako wewe. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tukufu kwa Mungu. We are going to that. Tunaenda kwenye jambo hilo. One time my sister came to me. Muda fulani dada alikuja kwangu. She passed to pray for me. Akasema mchungaji niombe. I'm surrounded by only enemies. Nimezungukwa na maadui tu and they abuse me every day. Na wananishutumu kila siku. I said sister. Nikamwambia dada do you know that in eternity unajua katika umirele that's what you wanted hicho ndicho ulichokitaka kule umireleni when god wanted asked you where you want to stay wakati mungu alipokuuliza unataka uende ukakae wapi you chose to stay among your enemies wewe ulichagua kukaa miongoni mwa maadui zako you chose to stay among the sons of men uli chagua kukaa miongoni mwa watu au wana wa ulimwengu au wana wa Not the son of God. Sio wana wa Mungu. No. Hapana. Do you know any believers are neighbors they are not, not good believe, not a good neighbors. Unajua wakati wa minio ni, ma, ni majirani, hawaoi majirani wazuri. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you follow it up. Fatilia hilo jambo. Believers who are neighbors very few are friends. Waamini ambao ni majirani ni wachache sana ambao ni marafiki. Because it's not normal. Kwa sababu sio kawaida. That is not a very normal environment for you. Hiyo sio njia ya kawaida ambayo iliandaliwa kwa ajili yako. You are supposed to be surrounded by non-believers. Inapaswa umezungukwa na wasioamini. I want to prove to you by the word. Nataka nikuthibitishie kwa neno. Proverbs chapter 8. Mithali sura ya 8. Let's begin from verse 22. Tuanzie mstari wa 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Bwana alikuwa pamoja nami katika mwanzo wa njia yake kabla ya matendo yake ya kale. Uh-huh. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or even before the earth was. Nilitukuka tokea milele tangu awali kabla haijawako dunia. When there, when there, where there when there was no depths I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Wakati visipokuwapo vilindi nalizaliwa. Wakati zisipokuwapo chemchemi zizo jaa maji. You see how you were? Unaona jinsi ulivyokuwa? That's how you were possessed. Hivyo ndio jinsi ulivyomilikiwa. Verse 26. Okay maybe 25. Before Aula the shita. mountains were settled, before the hills I was I brought forth. Kabla milima haijawekwa imara, kabla ya vilima nalizaliwa. While as yet he had not made the earth, all nor the fields 
not the highest part of the dust of the world alipokuwa hajayumba dunia wala makonde wala chanzo cha mavumbi ya dunia when he prepared the heavens i was there alipozi andaa mbingu nilikuwako when he set a compass upon the face of the depth alipoweka duara katika uso wa bahari when he established the clouds above alipoweka mawingu imara juu yaliyo juu when he strengthened the fountains of the deep chemchem za bahari zilipopata nguvu when the sea i mean when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment alipoipa bahari mpaka wake kwamba maji yasiasi amri yake when he appointed the foundations of the earth alipo iagiza misingi ya nchi now look at verse 30 tazama mstari wa 30 then i was by him nipo nilikuwa pamoja naye au pembeni yake as one brought up with him <laughs> kama mmoja aliyekuja pamoja naye and i was daily his delight nami nilikuwa furaha yake kila siku rejoicing always before him nikifurahia mara zote mbele zake now look at this one in verse 31 sasa tazama hii mstari wa 31 rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth nikifurahia sehemu inayoweza kukaliwa ya dunia you see unaona that's why christians ndio sababu wa kristo are the ones occupying the habitable parts of the earth wao ndio wanaoishi mahali panapoweza kukaliwa pa dunia the majority are in not deserts wengi hawako katika majangwa amina yes sir yeah habitable mahali panapoweza kukaa au kukua that's where you chose to be hapo ndipo ulipochagua uwe where there will be fruits and trees and flowers ambapo kungekuwa na miti na matunda na maua Hallelujah. That's why Saudi Arabia is for the Muslims. Hiyo ndio maana Saudi Arabia ni kwa ajili ya Waislamu. Egypt, Sudan, all those deserts are for Muslims. Hayo yote majangwa ni kwa ajili ya Waislamu. Yeah. Hallelujah. You had to be in a place where there is water for baptism. Ulipaswa uwe mahali ambapo kuna maji kwa ajili ya kubatizwa. Hallelujah. Put me there Lord. Niweke pale bwana. So that when I want to be baptized there will be water. Ili nitakapotaka kubatizwa maji yatakuepo. Amina. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Yes sir. And listen, my delights were with the sons of men. Sasa sikiliza. Na furaha yangu hey. ilikuwa pamoja na wanadamu. <laughs> Amina. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not the sons of God. Sio wana wa Mungu. You chose. Ulichagua to be among the sons of Uwe men. Uwe ni mwa wanadamu. So that they abuse you enough. Ili waweze kukushutumu vya kutosha. They bust you to you enough. Wakutese vya kutosha. They give you a hard time wakupatia wakati mgumu because you needed the darkness to show you are light kwa sababu unahitaji giza kuonesha nuru yako you are the children of light wewe ni mwana wa nuru but light is only better when there is darkness lakini nuru ni nzuri tu panapokuwa na giza that's why you chose where there is darkness ndio maana ulichagua mahali penye giza surrounded by darkness ukizungukwa na giza so that you arise and shine ili uinuke uangaze Hallelujah. So you chose. Kwa hiyo ulichagua. You are delight. Furaha yako was with the sons of men. Ilikuwa pamoja na wana wa wanadamu. Not the sons of God. Sio wana wa Mungu. You told God, ulimwambia Mungu, we shall just come together in the church. <laughs> Tutakuja tu pamoja kanisani. With the sons of God. Na wana wa Mungu. But where I stay? Lakini nitakapokuwa naishi mimi surrounded by sons of men. Nitakuwa nimezungukwa na wana wa wanadamu. So that I show them ili niweze kuwaonyesha what my father is. Kila macho baba what yangu my ulicho. kingdom is. Kila macho ufalme wangu ulicho. Where they hate me? Wanaponichukia? I love them. Niwapende. When they pursue me? Wanaponitesa? Me I support them. Mimi niwasaidie. They are bewitching me. Wanaponiroga? And they will know that I am not bewitchable. Na watajua sirogeki. 
They are curses. They will not affect me. I need to be where there are witches. So that the witches will know there is a God greater than our God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So you told God. I'm going to be there. But the problem is you have bypassed your theophany and you forgot what you told God. You forgot what you promised him. But through the preaching of the word you are reminded what you said. You connect back to your theophany and the theophany begins to tell you you, you remember you said this you remember you promised this and that's why you rejoice when the word is preached because you say there is something that tells you I remember I remember that I remember that I am that hallelujah Nothing is out of Keta. Everything is going on well. All is well for the bride. All is well for the believer. Glory to God. Okay. Now look at what the prophet says. And the prophet says, Grace is old. Grace is old. It's it is getting old. This is what the prophet that grace is as old as the world is. is old. Kwa imezeka. Imezeka kama ulimwengu ulivu. Iko karibu It is closing to That's why we are soon having no more grace for the world. Ndiyo maana muda si mrefu tunakuwa hatuna neema tena kwa je ulimwengu. Do you know that the intercession was for the ignorance of men? Je, unajua upatanisho ilikuwa kwa ajili ya kutokujua kwa watu. But now, are you ignorant of the world? You are not ignorant of the word. Lakini je, wewe hujui neno? Wewe unajua neno? That's why grace is now in the word. Ndio maana neema sasa hivi iko kwenye neno. That's why when the lamb opened the book. Ndio sababu mwana kondo alivyofungua kitabu. It was a bleeding lamb. Alikuwa ni mwana kondo anayevuja damu. And the blood fell into the book. Na damu ilianguka kwenye kitabu. And the blood is life. Na damu ni uhai. So now and you are told to take the book and eat the book. Na umeambiwa uchukue kitabu ule kitabu. So when you eat the book, unapokusoma kitabu, you are eating the word with life at the same time. Unapokula kitabu na kula neno na uhai hapo hapo. Hallelujah. Because there is blood in the word. Kwa sababu kuna damu kwenye neno. And blood is grace. Na damu ni neema. It's what takes away sin. Ndio inaondoa dhambi. Now. Sasa don't be there and think Joshua is going to be there forever. Usiwe pale ukafikia Joshua atakuwa pale milele. There is a time kuna wakati for us to possess the land. Kwa sisi kumiliki nchi. And God reminded Joshua. Na Mungu alimkumbusha Joshua. Say Joshua. Kaambia Joshua. You are the grace for the possession. Wewe ni neema kwa ajili ya wanao. And you are getting old. Na unazeeka. You are about to die. Unakaribia kufa. And there is still more land. Na bado kuna nchi. And today I'm here church. Na leo niko hapa kanisa. Remind you. Kukukumbusha. The time is over. Kwamba wakati umeisha. The angel has already sworn. Malaika amesha hapa. Time is no more. Wakati haupo tena. And you are not yet perfect. Na bado sio mkamilifu. The mysteries have been preached. Siri zinahubiriwa. The seals are open. Mihuri imefunuliwa. The angel came down. Malaika alikuja chini. That is Jesus Christ himself. Ambaye ni Yesu Kristo mwenyewe. He is here. Na yuko hapa. What are you doing? Unafanya nini? Why did he come down? Kwa nini alikuja chini? He came with the title deed book. Alikuja na kitabu cha hati ya kumiliki. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where your inheritance is. Urithi wako uko wapi? And that book. Na hicho kitabu. Which was taken from Adam. Kilichotukuliwa kutoka kwa Adam. When Adam 
fell Adam it was taken back to heaven and Jesus goes and takes the book and opens the book and comes down with the book to the final owner of the book the final owner the final owner is you and me and we are here and that angel Jesus himself is here with the book and he has made that book eatable as small as possible that you can eat it to make sure that this time around there is not going to be a failure the devil will not touch the book again the devil will not touch the book again the book is not going to go back to heaven you are going to eat the book the book is going to become you you are going to become the book you will become the book what is the book the mystery of your inheritance. What is the book? The title did the book. The agreement that God wrote for you and specified what belongs to you and gave you the full redemption rights now you are going to eat that and you are going to belch revelation of what belongs to you you know you know what belongs to you you know what belongs to you you are going to look at the giants you are not going to look at the chariots you are not going to look at what the doctor says you are not going to look at what the neighbor says not even what your husband calls you not what your wife calls you not what your neighbors call you but what the book says about you what the book says about you every promise in the book is mine every chapter every verse every line hallelujah hallelujah every promise in the book every chapter Kila sura. every verse Kila mstari. every line Kila mstari. every mystery between lines Kila siri ilio katikati ya mistari. is mine ya kwangu. now the book Sasa is in you Kiko ndani yako. now the book Sasa is in the bride Kiko ndani ya now you are the person Sasa we ndiyo mtu. why are you delaying Kwa nini unachelewa? when the land is there Wakati nchi iko pale. Oh, I wish I could be a good preacher. Ninashauku na tamani ningekuwa mhubiri mzuri. And I'm kaput, finished, na tired. Si chochote nimechoka. Mwili dhaifu. I wish I could have strength like my friend who was rotating here yesterday like. Ninashauku ningekuwa na nguvu kama rafiki yangu aliyekuwa anazunguka hapa jana. The young old man. Kijana mzee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Glory be to God. So he says, Grace is getting old. This is in the message, message of grace. Grace is old. Grace is as old as the world is. So it's about to die. Do you know the last sermon that Jesus preached to preach to souls in prison? But for him to preach to souls in prison, he had to die. And the prophet said, the third pool 
will be preached to the total lost. But it will be for the elect. In other words, it will be purposed for the benefit of the elect. But even the total lost will be there. That means they will be in the church hearing the mysteries preached but they cannot cross the line to possess they will listen to testimonies of other people when they are there they will So don't sit and stare. God has brought this message for you. Don't even come here to slumber. Some of you have started sleeping. So if I tell you to stand, you'll stand, isn't it? If you don't want to stand, then listen. Because me, I'm a pastor. I see everywhere. I see. You can't even pretend by shaking your head. Like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> when you are sleeping, <laughs> I will know you are sleeping. <laughs> Unajua unalala. Nitajua, nitajua. Nitajua kwamba wewe unalala. You not you not you not confuse me. I know. Hauto ni changanya. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. Now the prophet comes here. Nabii anakuja hapa. In the message um ever present water. Kwenye ujumbe wa maji yaliyopo daima. He says. Anasema. When you are saved, unapookolewa, God gives you faith to rise up from the muck of the earth. Mungu anakupa imani ya kuinuka kutoka kwenye mavumbi ya ardhi. Your faith overcomes the things of the world. Imani yako inashinda mambo ya ulimwengu. What is your faith? Imani yako ni nini? Your faith in that act that God has did in you. Imani yako kwenye kile kitendo ambacho Mungu amefanya ndani yako. Mhm. -mm. He's talking about your faith in that act that God has already done in you. Anazungumzia kuhusu imani yako kwenye kitendo ambacho Mungu tayari ameshika kitendo ndani. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, there is something already done and is already in you, but you don't believe that it is in you and is already done. Kuna kitu ambacho kimeshatendeka tayari ndani yako na kipo ndani yako tayari, lakini huamini kama kimeshatendeka. That's why Caleb said those people are as good as food for us. Ndio maana Caleb alisema hao watu ni ni chakula kwa ajili yetu. Wacha tuchunguze hii maneno ya chakula. Let us examine these things of the food. Chakula inamaanisha nini? What does food mean? Something which is already prepared, cooked, ready to be eaten. Kitu ambacho tayari kimeshaandaliwa kimepikwa tayari kuliwa. <laughs> Not something that you are going to prepare. Sio kitu ambacho wewe unaenda kuandaa. It is already prepared. Tayari kimeshaandaliwa. But if for you are looking at it as a problem. Lakini wewe unatazama hicho kama tatizo. Oh. Amen. So what is a testimony? Kwa hiyo ushuhuda ni nini? It's a test mag, uh, transformed. Ni jaribu lililobadilishwa. Hey. You cannot have a testimony without a test. Huwezi kuwa na ushuhuda bila jaribu. Amen. You cannot have a testimony that God healed me unless you are sick first. Huwezi kuwa na ushindi akisema Mungu ameniponya. Labda uwe unaumwa kwanza. That's why we should thank God for sicknesses. Ndio maana sasa tunapaza kumshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya magonjwa. Yeye. Amina. 
Pastor Maira, what are you saying? Hey, Maira, Thank God for sickness. Yes. Because without sicknesses, you will not have a testimony. But when God gives permits a sickness, you know what he told about Job? It is not for his death. Don't touch his life. Usiguse uhai wake. Is for a testimony. Ni kwa ajili ya ushuhuda. But it was so painful. Lakini inauma sana. But all of us today refer to Job. Lakini wengi wote sisi sote leo tunamrejea Ayubu. What if Job didn't pass through that? Vipi kama Ayubu asingepitia hilo? Whom would you refer to? Ungeweza kurejea kwa nani? Was it a simple thing to lose your children to death? Je, ilikuwa ni jambo rahisi kupoteza watoto wako wafe? So who will pass through the testimony? Sasa I mean the nani, test. nani atapita kwenye jaribu? And now let me come to something. Sasa ngoja nije kwenye jambo fulani. They who the believers. Wale wakina nani? Waaminio. They overcame him. Walimshinda yeye. How? Kwa jinsi gani? By the blood of the lamb. Kwa damu ya mwanakondo? Yes, eh hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, we sing that Tunaimba. But it's not that alone. Lakini sio damu ya mwanakondo peke yake. And na the word neno of their neno la testimony. Ushuhuda wao. Hallelujah. So you are not going to overcome the devil by just the blood. Kwa hiyo hutomshinda shetani kwa damu peke yake. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No. Hapana. Do you have a word of your testimony? Je, una neno la ushuhuda wako? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Dio. Hey, are you having a testimony? Je, una ushuhuda? Not pastor's testimony. Sio ushuhuda wa mchungaji. Not sister Sarah's testimony. Sio ushuhuda dada Not Sarah. sister Jennifer's testimony. Sio ushuhuda dada Jennifer. Not brother Jackson's testimony. Sio ushuhuda ndugu Jackson. Your testimony. Ushuhuda wako mwenyewe. You are. Wewe wa kwako. Yeah. Ndio. God doesn't have grandchildren. Mungu hana majukuu. All children are born the same way. Watoto wake wanazaliwa jinsi ile ile. You must have a testimony. Lazima uwe na ushuhuda. A personal testimony. Ushuhuda binafsi. In order to overcome. Ili ushinde. The big, the giant. Wale majitu. Sometimes you have to overcome these simple things. It's easy. Wakati mwingine unashinda haya mambo rahisi. But when you are dealing with a giant of a problem, lakini unapo deal na jitu la tatizo, you need a testimony. Unahitaji ushuhuda. Look at David. Mtazame Daudi. David to fight Goliath. Ili Daudi apigane na Goliath. He looked back to a testimony. Alitazama nyuma kwenye ushuhuda wake. Personal. Ushuhuda binafsi. He said, Akasema, The God, Mungu, the God, Mungu who delivered me. Aliyenikomboa mimi from the paws of the bear. Kutoka kwenye nguvu za dubu. And from the paws of a lion. Kutoka kwenye nguvu za simba. That same God. Mungu yule yule is going to give this man into my hands. kwangu. Yeah. Hamina. Yes sir. You need a testimony. Unahitaji ushuhuda. To fire you up. Kwa ajili ya kukuchochea. Why? Kwa nini? That's how sheep fight. Hivyo ndivyo kondoo wanapopigana. The sheep when they are fighting an enemy. Kondoo wanapopigana na adui. Wanatembea kinyume nyume kidogo. Wanarudi nyuma hivi. <laughs> Say okay. Wanasema sawa. Hallelujah. Boo. Wanapiga poo. Anaenda nyuma kidogo. He goes back a little to pick the momentum from the testimony. Ili apate nguvu kutoka kwenye ushuhuda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it comes. Alafu anakuja. Anapiga. 
That's how sheep fight. Hivyo ndivyo kondoo wanavyopigana. They don't fight like goats. Hawapigani kama mbuzi. The goats are the ones that say. Mbuzi ndio wanaanza kufanya hivyo. The Ephraimites, you know. Wakina Ephraim. You know me. Unanijua mimi. Do you know me? Unanijua mimi. Do you know me? Unanijua mimi. I am educated. Mimi nina elimu. I am a man. Mimi ni mtu. I have a lot of experience. Nina ujuzi mwingi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh man. Oh jamani. They talk about the numbers. They Wana talk about the experience. Wana you know me? Unanjua mimi? You know me? Wewe unanjua mimi? Do you know me? Je, unanjua mimi? They are heavy, high-minded, minded, proud. Wamejana akiri, wanajua mengi na wana kiburi. And they will always Na mara zote wako? They will always lift their head above everybody. Mara zote watainua vichwa vyao juu ya kila mtu. Ili waonekane wao. That is God. Hao ni mbuzi. Everybody look to me. Kila mmoja niangalie mimi. I am the man. Mimi ndi mtu. But they the the ram lakini wana kondoo doesn't even lift up its head hata ainui kichwa chake juu it goes back to the testimony again yeah narudi kwenye ushuhuda tu impulse the testimony from the cupboard anavuta ushuhuda kutoka kwenye kabati kwanza sha sha said the lord that delivered in me anasema bwana aliyenikomboa that is david now huyo ni daudi sasa Then he goes. Alafu anaenda. Poo. Anapiga poo kwa kichwa. Kichwani. Ye kondoo inagonga kichwa tu. Kondoo anapiga kwa kichwa tu. Na unakumbuka David Daudi namna alisema? Leo nitatoa kichwa yako. Today I will cut your head. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. So, kwa hiyo, you will need a testimony. Utahitaji ushuhuda. That's why I'm passing through this one also. Hiyo ndio sababu na mimi napitia hii pia. Then it will become a testimony. Halafu itafanyika ushuhuda. That I preached in Tanzania even when I had flu. Kwamba nilihubiri Tanzania hata nilivyokuwa na mafua makali. And never is defeated, okay? That's my testimony. Na ndio ameshashindwa, najua huo ni ushuhuda tayari. I'm preaching whether he wants it or not. Na ubiri atake au asitake. <laughs> so you see? Kwa hiyo unaona? You overcome the devil? Unamshinda shetani? By the blood of the lamb? Kwa damu ya mwana kondoo. But also? Lakini pia by the word. Kwa neno of your own la ushuhuda wako mwenyewe not the testimony from our church sio ushuhuda kutoka kanisani kwetu not my pastor's testimony sio ushuhuda wa mchungaji wangu not my husband's testimony sio ushuhuda wa my wife my wife is a prayer warrior mke wangu ni shujaa wa maombi she can pray for two hours anaweza kuomba masaa mawili prays and prays and prays anaomba na kuomba and what about you vipi kuhusu wewe Glory be to God. Watukufu wewe kwa Mungu. Oh my, I have to Jamani, finish now. Na, na malizia sasa. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. When you are going to deal with these five giants of the Philistines. Unapoenda kushughulika na haya majitu matano ya Wafilisti. That's why it had to take a David with a personal testimony. Hiyo ilihitaji Daudi mwenye ushuhuda binafsi to kill him. Ili aweze kumuua. So he says. Kwa hiyo anasema. So you are faith in the act in that act that God has already done in you. Imani yako kwenye kile kitendo ambacho Mungu tayari ameshafanya ndani yako. In order to make you a son of God. Hicho kinakufanya uwe mwana wa Mungu. You quit your lying, you quit your stealing, you quit your drinking. Unaacha uongo, unaacha kuiba, unaacha kunywa pombe because your faith keeps rising up above it. 
kwa sababu imani yako inaendelea kuinuka juu ya hayo begins to raise up above it imani inaendelea kukua juu ya hayo above your last juu ya tamaa yako above your desires for pornography juu ya shauku zako kwa ajili ya picha chafu za ngono above the pressures of laodicea juu ya mambo ya kifahari ya laodikia and you young men and women na nyinyi vijana wa kiume na wa kike above the powers of masturbation unaenda juu ya nguvu za punyeto yeah Do you know that masturbation is an initiation into homosexuality? Unajua punyeto ni mwanzo wa kwenda kwenye mambo ya jinsia moja na ushoko. Ndio. And you find young men in those things. Na unapata vijana wanafanya hivyo. Yes, I see that spirit is here. Ndio, naona hiyo roho iko hapa. Young women also. Wasichana wadogo pia. Do you know that what leads you to lesbianism? Mnajua kinachofanya muende kwenye mambo ya usagaji. More of God and you keep going higher and higher above those spirits. Unahitaji Mungu zaidi ili uweze kukua zaidi juu ya hayo mambo. Laodicea is trying to pull you. Laodikia inakuvuta. But this message calls you out of Laodicea. Lakini ujumbe unakuita utoke Laodikia. Calls you out of the world. Unakutaa ulimwenguni. Faith is the victory. Imani ni ushindi. Faith in the word of God. Imani katika neno la Mungu. Is what overcomes the world. Ndio kinachoshinda ulimwengu. Faith. Imani. In the already finished work of God which is in you. Kwenye kazi ya Mungu ambayo imeshamalizika tayari ndani Until you overcome yourself. Mpaka unajishinda mwenyewe. Until you fight yourself, kill yourself and bury yourself. Mpaka unapigana na wewe mwenyewe unajiua mwenyewe unajizika mwenyewe. Yes. Ndio. And you step on your grave. Na unasimama juu ya kaburi lako mwenyewe. Here lies Maira. Na unasema hapa amelala Musa. This is now Jesus Christ. Huyu ni Bwana Yesu Kristo. And it's Jesus who is going to live until I go home. Na ni Yesu atakayeenda kuishi mpaka niende nyumbani. He says if you don't do that Anasema kama ufanyi hivyo then you don't have any faith. Ndipo huna imani yoyote. As much as your faith will be released, kiasi tu ile imani yako itaachiliwa huru. That is how much power you can have. Hiyo ndio kiasi ya nguvu utakayokuwa nayo. Listen, sikiza. Because in you, kwa sababu ndani yako dwells the power to make heavens and earth. Inakaa nguvu ya kuumba mbingu na nchi. In you ndani yako how many believe that ni wangapi wanaamini if you are the bride you say amen kama wewe ni bibi harusi sema amen in you ndani yako where's the power kuna kaa nguvu to make heaven and earth ya kuumba mbingu na nchi now listen sasa sikiliza god dwells in you mungu anaishi ndani yako and you are sons and daughters of god amen nani ni wana na binti za mungu amina there you are hapo mpo but it takes your faith it is your faith lakini inagarimu imani yako ni Jesus said Yesu alisema according to your faith kulingana na imani yako kulingana na kipimo ya imani yako amina according to the measure of your faith unajipimia kipimo gani you measure yourself is that swahili yes what measure are you measuring for yourself je ni kipimo gani unachokijipimia that's what you get If they give you a full cow, wakikupatia ngombe mzima, and said cut for yourself what you want. Na waseme jikatie kipande unaweza. And you cut half kilogram and you go. Na unakata nusu kilo unaenda. That's what you wanted. Hicho ndicho kilichohitaji. Otherwise the cow was for you. Vinginavyo ngombe mzima ilikuwa kwa ajili yako. You can carry it and take it home. Unaweza kabeba uende nayo nyumbani. I don't want a piece meal of Jesus. Sitaki kipande cha Yesu. I want the whole of Jesus. Nataka Yesu mzima. I want the whole word. Nataka Yesu mzima. When the angel wakati malaika accepted to give John the book. Alipokubali kumpa Yohana kitabu. He gave him on one condition. Alimpa kwa kwa sharti moja. Take it. Kichuku. But eat it. Lakini kile eat all of it kula kitabu chote don't some of it half of it sio nusu yake au robo tatu au robo tatu chote so the whole book kwa hiyo kitabu chote is yours ni cha kwako it depends on what measure you want to take inahitaji kipimo gani unataka kuchukua 
according to your faith be it unto you kulingana na imani yako iwe hivyo kwako if thou canst believe kama unaweza kuamini all things are possible yote yanawezekana very i say unto you amini na kuambia if you say to this mountain kama ukiambia huu mlima be moved ondoka and you don't doubt it na wewe usitie shaka but you believe what you have said lakini uamini kile ulichosema then the prophet come concludes by saying ndio nabii anakuja anasema then what kind of people ought we to be ndipo aina gani ya watu tunapaswa sisi kuwa having faith in this great redeeming christ that lives in us kuwa na imani kwa huyu kristo mkubwa mkombozi anayeishi ndani yetu this smitten rock that never leaves the church huu mwamba uliopigwa ambao kama hauliachi kanisa he said I, i am always with you alisema mara zote niko pamoja even the end of the world mpaka mwisho wa ulimwengu the ever princes of the great gasha of salvation uepo uliopo daima wa chemchemi ya wokovu and the power that poured forth from calvary into the church na nguvu inayotirika kutoka calvary kuja kanisani and the ever princes of the living god uepo uliopo wa nguvu wa Mungu aliyehai the great flowing smitten rock that goes us goes with us in our journey mtiririko mkuu wa ule mambo uliopigwa ambao unaenda nasi safarini so israel lost her faith kwa israel walipoteza imani yao they got off the path wakaondoka njiani they began to lust for the flesh pots wakaanza kutamania nyama za nyama zao kwenye viungu if they had stayed with faith kama wangedumu na imani and believing that god was going to take them to the land na kuamini kwamba mungu angewapeleka kwenye ile nchi there would have been nothing to hinder them kusinge kuwa na kitu cha kuwazuia listen sikiza because they had already opened up seas kwa sababu walikuwa wameshafungua bahari tayari they had smitten, smitten the plagues upon their enemies walikuwa wameshapiga mapigo juu ya maadui wao they had crucified their enemies behind them walikuwa wamewasurubisha maadui yao nyuma yao and they had walked over into the land walikuwa wametembea hadi kwenye ile nchi but still couldn't have faith go on to the promise lakini bado hawakuwa na imani ya kuendelea kwenye ahadi with all that you have seen na yote walioyaona and Joshua and Caleb had that faith na Joshua na Caleb walikuwa na hiyo imani. And they said we are more than able to conquer. Na wakasema sisi tu zaidi ya wanaoweza kushinda. Anything that would come before us. Chochote kitakachokuja mbele yetu. That is the trouble with the church. Hiyo ndio shida ya kanisa. We can conquer every disease. Tunaweza kushinda kila ugonjwa. When we come to that the amen is a few. Tukifika hapo amina zinapungua. We still want to give the devil permission to bado tunataka tumpe ruhusa shetani to have some diseases conquer us awe na baadhi ya magonjwa yanayotushinda sisi that's why the prophet said that that's the trouble with the church hiyo ndio nabii amesema hiyo ndio shida ya kanisa and that's the trouble with you today na hiyo ndio shida yenu leo we can conquer every disease tunaweza kushinda kila ugonjwa we got that power in us now tunayo hiyo nguvu ndani yetu sasa we are sons and daughters of god sisi ni wana na binti za mungu nothing can stand before us hakuna kinachoweza kusimama mbele yetu did he say that right je alisema hilo kweli nothing hakuna nothing hakuna can stand kinaweza kusimama before us mbele yetu now listen sasa sikiza the only thing kitu pekee he wants to find somebody who will believe it anataka kumpata mtu fulani atakaye liamini who is that somebody huyo mtu fulani ni nani god wants to find somebody mungu anataka ampate mtu fulani who will believe it ambaye ataliamini who will believe what god has already done for you ambaye ataamini kila macho mungu tayari ameshakufanyia listen Skiza. not we will be sio tutakuwa we are now sasa hivi sisi tuko hivyo i think in one of these places i'll be preaching about that doctrine of the devil nadhani mmoja wapo ya haya maeneo nitakuwa nikihubiri kuhusu ile fundisho la shetani i think before i leave tanzania nadhani kabla siondoka tanzania satan will always tell you you will be it you will be shetani atakwambia mara zote utakuwa hivi He can even allow you to accept it for tomorrow. Anaweza akakufanya ukubali hilo kwa jia kesho. And as long as you say yes, na it will be. Ndiyo, it will itakuwa hivyo itakuwa hivyo. I want to tell you. Na kwa, nataka ni kwambie. You are in bed with the devil. Uko kitandani na shetani. The devil always is very comfortable when you say I will get it. Shetani ameridhika unaposema nitaipata. 
but he hates and he fears someone who says I got it lakini anachukia na anaogopa anasema ninayo sasa hivi ninaiona sasa because he knows kwa sababu anajua he will trap you by the very bible that you believe atakushikilia sehemu fulani kwa atakutega kwa biblia yako hiyo hiyo unaoiamini because he knows the bible says kwa sababu anajua biblia anasema one day with the lord is a thousand years siku moja kwa mungu ni miaka elfu So if you give yourself an extra day. Kwa hiyo ukijipatia wewe mwenyewe siku nyingine. You already ziyana. lost it by a thousand years. Umeshaipoteza kwa miaka 1000. That means you will never get it in your life. Ina maana inamaanisha hutoipata kamwe kwenye maisha yako. So the true revelation for the bride is today. Kwa hiyo kunua kweli wa bibi harusi ni leo sasa. So even if it it happens 5 months from now it is still today. Kwa hiyo hata ikitendeka miezi mitano kutoka sasa bado ni leo. You are claiming it as you are today. Unaidai hiyo kama leo. Amina. So we are that today now. Kwa sisi ni hivyo leo sasa hivi. You are healed now. Umepona sasa hivi. You are changed now. Umebadilishwa sasa hivi. You are filled with the Holy Spirit now. Umejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu sasa hivi. You are in heaven now. Uko mbinguni sasa hivi. In heaven places in Jesus. Mahali pa kimbinguni ndani ya Yesu. That's why John ndio maana Yohana when he saw John alipomuona Yohana John saw John Yohana kamuona Yohana John on the island Yohana kisiwani of Patmos cha Patmo but he's looking at 24 elders lakini anaangalia wale wazee 24 and he's one of the 24 elders na yeye ni mmoja wapo wale wazee 24 he saw himself there akajiona mwenyewe pale before he goes there kabla hajaenda pale he's already there tayari yuko pale And then he says Na akasema Every creature on earth Kila kiume duniani Every creature in heaven Kila kiume mbinguni Every creature under the earth Kila kiume kuzimu Had me Bika nisikia Praising the Lord Nikimsifu Bwana Saying thank you God Nikasema asante Mungu Glory 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 tukufu, glory Tukufu tukufu Because I've already got it Kwa sababu nimeshaipata tayari Even before I leave the earth Hata kabla sijaondoka duniani Haleluya Oh you have already got what you are looking for. Umeshapata kile unachokitafuta. And the prophet says The prophet says Nabii anasema Every need that you will ever have. Kila hitaji ambalo utawahi kuwa nao. Let me repeat it. Hebu nirudie. Every need that you will ever have in your life. Kila hitaji ambalo utawahi kuwa nao maisha yako. Is already in you answered. Tayari liko ndani yako limeshajibiwa. God has already put it in you. Mungu ameshaliweka ndani yako tayari. Whatever you need between now and the rapture is already lying in you. You will just belch it out by revelation. Because every promise kwa sababu kila ahadi need kila hitaji is in that book that you have been reading ndani ya hicho kitabu unachokula that book of redemption kitabu cha ukombozi that book of inheritance kitabu cha urithi haleluya haleluya The devil doesn't want such. Satani hataki jinsi hiyo. But too late for him you have had it. Lakini amechelewa umeshasikia. Too late. Amechelewa. You have had it. Umesikia. Too late. Amechelewa. You have already had your name in the book. Umeshasikia jina lako kwenye kitabu. Too late. Amechelewa. You already know it's done. Umeshajua imeshatendeka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless you let's stand up. Mungu awabariki tusimame. Glory. Utukufu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. So don't be scared of those diseases. Usiogope hayo magonjwa. Those are just God's raw materials for a testimony. Hivyo ni vifaa vya Mungu kwa ajili ya ushuhuda. God, Mungu needs some cotton to make you a shirt. Anahitaji pamba fulani ili akutengenezee shirt. So the cotton is the sickness. Kwa hiyo pamba ni magonjwa. It's a raw material. Ni vifaa. Those problems around you. Hayo matatizo yanayokuzunguka. Those trials and temptations. Hayo majaribu 
you are even to say thank you God for those testimonies. Thank you God for the trials. Thank you God for the diseases. Thank you God for the enemies. Because that's my food. That's my strength. That's my strength. That's my revival. That's my power. That's my victory. And I am a victor. Na mimi ni msindi because I have got the raw materials. Kwa sababu ninayale malighafi. Amira